I'm here at the Peddler's Daughter in Haverhill with owner Michael Connolly. It's, uh, it's so warm and friendly in here. It feels Is this like a typical Irish pub? I think it is, yeah. It's kind of what I grew up with and that's why we really designed this, you know. This, uh, we made it like somewhere that I'd, I'd go into in Ireland, you know. This is the first one, yeah. We'd be here 15 years this April. You have a great Irish food. Now, how would you describe your menu? Is it totally Irish? Is it? Not really, no. No, we've got a lot of traditional Irish stuff here, but, uh, you know, like the fish and chips and stuff like that. But then, as well as, you know, we've got the Americanized dishes like chicken wings. You know, we, we, we've got nachos, which are, we put our own twist on. And we've got burgers, of course, as well. well uh, let's talk about... The, uh, the nachos here, they're a little sure. bit different. So tell me what, what's in there. Uh, well, you've got, we make our own home, homemade potato chips and, um, and we, we, uh, we cook those off first and then we top them with uh, some cheddar cheese, onions, tomatoes, a uh, little bit of bacon and top them with sour cream and scallions. Mm. So it's a take on the, the American nacho but using you know, a product that was dear to our heart in Ireland, the potato. Mm, that's <laughs> yummy, very good, very good. And, and, and what is this? This is our scotch egg. So. This, this came, you know, uh, originated in Scotland years ago, but, uh, you know, you'll find around pubs around Ireland, about, especially in rural pubs and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a hard-boiled egg that is wrapped in, in, in Irish sausage, and then we, we bread it on the outside, and then, and then we deep fry it, and, and we serve it with a very hot mustard. That's very good. So now this is your number one seller? That's correct, yes, our fish and chips. Um, yes, yeah, from day one, we wrap it in newspaper, uh, of course, and uh, we serve haddock. With, with, uh, with the fries and um, you know it comes out in a nice little package, it kind of steams it when it's been brought to the table and, and, and we serve with our own homemade ketchup and homemade tartar as well. This ketchup is like the best ketchup I've ever had. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a ketchup connoisseur, I'm very fussy about my ketchup. <laughs> that is delicious, it's a little bit sweet, it has a little bit of chunkiness to it. Yeah, It's yeah. really good. Well thank you, yeah we make that from scratch, you know we make about 15 gallons a week of that. So now the fish and chips I want to talk about a little bit more, so it's haddock. It's haddock we serve, yes. So when you wrap it in the in the newspaper, it absorbs a little bit of the grease from the frying. Correct. Right? So yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. We have, we have obviously parchment paper underneath it. You know. And I know that newspaper now is is, is printed with like vegetable um, ink and everything. So That's it's, correct. You don't have yeah. to worry yeah. about getting into No, we don't. No. And then we've got obviously obviously we've got the uh, the parchment paper on the inside and stuff. So, yeah. Now in front of you, that is one big sandwich. Yes, this is our corned beef sandwich. Everything is made from scratch here. So we buy the corned beef raw, we brine it and then we cook it for about six hours and, and then we serve it with Texas toast and we have a duo mustards each side of it mm. and it's topped with Swiss cheese. So some's warm um, and it's, it's a very hearty sandwich but it melts in your mouth. Yeah, so when, if you, because you brine it yourself, what makes that different? Uh, we've known how long to brine it for uh, as well as that and to tenderize the corned beef so, so this corned beef just falls apart. So tell me, what goes on here on St. Patty's Day? Well, a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have music, uh, we open at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, for Irish breakfast and then we start serving lunch, uh, corned beef and cabbage and all the, all the other Irish specialities at 11. And then we have music starting at 10 a.m. Uh, we have three bands that day, um, all the way through to closing time till 1 a.m. So it's a great time. We have bagpipers as well as we have Irish dancers come by as well. And so do you start drinking the beer with breakfast? Of course you do. Yes, yes. Breakfast of <laughs> champions, that's, we call that's, it. That's the rule. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. <laughs> now you have um, a lot of Irish beer here? We do, yes. Yeah, we do. We, we have Guinness, uh, Smithics. Uh, harp, obviously. Uh, then we've got Magners, and then all the local brews as well. You know, they're the, they're the four staple Irish Irish drinks, and then we got all the local brews, uh, micro brews as well. So now, what makes Irish beer different, say Guinness, than just American beer? Well, well, if you go back to Guinness, Guinness is one of the oldest beers in the world, and and it's been brewed there since uh, 1759, and it, it's got its own unique recipe. Nobody else can copy Guinness, and and it's the way it cascades when you pour it. You know, the the proper pint is about three minutes. Uh, two minutes and 59 seconds actually <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you've got to wait for it and you just don't pour it up straight away That's, so people make the mistake of, of pouring a Guinness improperly and we do it very very well here. You know. So what, what's your favorite beer? Well uh, Guinness is, uh, is my favorite beer actually yeah. Yeah. yeah I drink Guinness all the time. And it goes well with like everything that's it, on the it table? Really does. It really does it's a great beer we cook with it you know we, we, we've got a Guinness beer dinner coming up next week uh, you know we cook our chocolate with it and we cook uh, our Guinness beef stew is this uh, we use the Guinness and the beef stew as well. Nice. Now your bartender made a really great drink. It also contains Guinness? It also contains Guinness, yes. It's, it's, this is our Guinness Martini. Hi, my name's Eric. I'm one of the bartenders at the Peddler's Daughter, and I'm going to make the Guinness Martini for you right now. Start with your shaker filled with ice. We're going to use Svetka vanilla, and then we're going to use equal parts of Bailey's, Kahlua, and Frangelico. You want to give it a good shake? Top it off with Guinness. There we are. 
And then we finish with a little dollop of whipped cream. There you have the Guinness Martini. So it's kind of like dessert in a glass? Kind of dessert in a glass, exactly, yeah, yeah. Cool. So I want to just go back to the name of the peddler's daughter. Yeah. So where did that come from? It came from a woman that was in Haverhill. Um, uh, her name was Maggie Klein, and uh, she was on vaudeville back in uh, the 1800s. And her father was from Ireland, and uh, he was a peddler. He peddled queers of paper, uh, iodine, ink. And, uh, you know, when she was growing up, uh, they nicknamed her the peddler's daughter. And she was a native to Haverhill, but would end up on vaudeville, very successful. And uh, when I was researching the area, I found that uh, I found that out, and then and I called this place the peddler's daughter. Well, that's great. So it's yeah. authentic to the area. Correct. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, can we have a toast to sure the peddler's daughter? Cheers. Good health. Cheers. Uh, uh, Same to you. <laughs> Thank you.